G'day, how you doing? Adam Williams here from Adam Williams Creative YouTube. <laughs> what a great intro that was, hey? If you've been with me before, I would love it if you enjoy my content, if you could hit that subscribe button as a way of saying thank you because it helps get these videos out to a whole bunch more people and makes it worthwhile me doing regular videos, which I'm hoping to do this year. I've had a bit of a break. Last year we did a whole bunch of live video, live videos and a few other videos. This year we haven't done a lot. In fact, to be honest, you might know I haven't done a lot YouTube-wise for probably six months now, but I'm looking to get back into regular videos, hopefully once a week, and hopefully bringing back those live YouTube live shows, okay, where you guys can be with me in the comments, having a good old laugh at me, whatever, pronouncing names wrong, misspelling stuff, misdoing this, that, the other, just making general fool of myself whilst enjoying photography. That's what it's all about. Just enjoy ourselves with our photography. That's what this channel is all about. Having fun, taking photos, having a good old laugh and uh, hopefully creating something enjoyable. Well, creating something worthwhile, but the main point is enjoying ourselves. Now, before we get into this, I've got a photo from one of the students, a bit of a troublesome photo that I'm looking forward to doing an edit on to seeing how we can go. Before we do that, a little bit of housekeeping. Last month, actually, yeah, last month, December, we ran a giveaway for one of these, a Sarui waterproof tripod, an absolute beauty. And that has been drawn and won by David Mal, <laughs> here we go, David Maligno from Switzerland. David, congratulations, that tripod will be in the post to Switzerland to you tomorrow or the next day and I'll make sure I get you that tracking number as well. Now for everyone that missed out, guess what? We're doing another one, starting now. Starting now, we're giving away these. Nissi Starter Kit and it's got, oh, here you go, all that good stuff. Couple of neutral density filters, couple of grads, the holder, the polarizer, this, that, the other, everything you need, everything you need to create those incredibly dreamy long exposures, dramatic long exposure photos. I love long exposure photos. I've got a set of Nissi filters exactly like that one. In fact, not quite as good as that one, to be honest, but uh, that one's got everything you need and a little bit more than what even I have to create those incredibly dreamy long exposure photos. Check out in the description below, there'll be a link to enter that giveaway. Now, over the next six, maybe even 12 months, I'm going to be giving away an incredible photography based prize pretty much every month, maybe every four to six weeks we'll be doing this. I've got five more prizes currently, and if it goes well, I'll just keep adding bigger and better and more awesome prizes as we go. So make sure you hit the subscribe button here, or follow us at Easy Way Photography on Instagram so that you don't miss out on entering you know, any of these competitions, or if you happen to be the winner, um, you can see that when we announce those winners. Okay, beautiful, what else? There's some other quick things that I want to touch on. If you're looking to improve your photography, learn Photoshop, learn composition, check out easywayphotography.com.au. If they are not the best Photoshop or photography courses in the world, in your opinion, I will give you a full refund. Okay, jump over and check out those to improve your photography. There is also a free sample course on the homepage, easywayphotography.com.au. That's enough of that. Let's get into this. Let me switch over to full screen. Now I've got this image here. How do you like the new casual 2021 attire? We will do the odd collared shirt, but just feel more casual in the t-shirt, sitting at home in the lounge room with you guys. I hope you don't mind me taking the more casual approach. Okay. We got this photo here from Cheryl. Cheryl sent me this image a couple of days ago and she was concerned about this area of highlight and wondering how she might be able to maybe drop in a new sky. And on taking a look at this, to be honest, you know, I don't think that's going to be the solution because you've got some rock detail in there and bits and pieces, dropping a new sky over is just going to look like it's in front of the landscape rather than you know at the back where it should be because we don't have a defined 
horizon there to really drop in a new sky. So what can we do? Well, Cheryl said it's a great excuse to go back and shoot it again. And absolutely, maybe this location is just down the road. Maybe it's in an exotic place where she wants to return. And that is a good solution too. When you go back or when you're confronted with high dynamic range images like this, where you have really bright highlights and maybe dark shadowy areas like between these two rock formations, you might want to take three or five shots at different exposure levels. So you've got one that controls your highlights, a shorter exposure, and then as you come back down, a longer exposure which exposes your shadows, and then you can blend them together. Of course, blending images together, we've got all those videos in the Photoshop courses at Easy Way Photography. Link in description. <laughs> Sorry about the, the plugs. We will get onto it. All right. So what do we do? Well, let's assume that we can't drop in a sky and let's assume that we can't get back there or we're not going to get back there in any sort of short time frame. Do we throw this in the bin? Well, we could, but I think we can get something out of it. Now, embracing the imperfections is what I'm talking about. I think we can use that imperfection somewhat to our advantage and still get a really nice print out of this image. Let's see if we can do that. Now, this reminds me, I don't think it is, but it reminds me kind of of some of the central Australian locations where we have these red rock, red granite rock formations. The more I look at it, the more I think it's not, but I'm going to assume that it is along those lines and process it a little bit like that. So initially I see the photo as being a little bit cold, a little bit cool. Um, and this this blaring sun, midday sun, I would want that to be overall a little bit warmer. So if we grab the temperature slider just a little bit, I mean, we're almost done. Like honestly, for me, we're getting there. No, we're not done. I'm going to do a little bit more and we're going to make the most out of that blazing um, hot spot up the top. But let's see how we go. That's pretty nice. Now we could lower the highlights a little. Doesn't do much though, does it really? Somewhere down there. The shadows are fine. We don't need to touch those. Texturing, we could add a little bit of texture maybe for sharpening. Okay, detail slider. All these settings are within my uh, courses, of course, all these settings. I like the radius all the way to the left, detail all the way to the right. We can hold down Option or Alt and click on the mask and we really want on this image, look, to be honest, something like that will be fine. In the smooth areas, we want that to be rather black and our detail areas, as we just do that again, whoops, wrong, wrong slider, just like that. So, you know, this image can be sharpened pretty much across the board without too much dramas. Noise reduction, we're going to set that on 30 points. Color noise reduction, 30 points, they are my defaults. We are here in Adobe Camera Raw. Of course, normally I would go through Adobe Lightroom, but when I'm working on someone else's photo, I find it easier to go through Adobe Camera Raw. All right, that looks pretty good. We won't mess about with anything else in here. All those settings will be in my courses. We'll open that straight into Photoshop. Hello, there's one of my images that I've been working on, my updated tutorials. I'm currently updating all the tutorials at Easy Way Photography. Uh, okay, before we get started, or as we get started, one of the first things to consider is what, you know, what are the features of this image that we're going to really highlight? Now, obviously, we've got the main subject here being the person walking through this rock canyon, and that, to me, is what the feature of this photo is. So we're going to try and highlight both the subject and this rock canyon. Let's see how we go about that. I'm just winging, sort of winging this, winging, winging. I can't even winging this <laughs> off the cuff, if you like. Winging doesn't come out quite as smoothly as I was hoping it to. Off the cuff. We're just doing this off the cuff. Okay. Um, all right. So. We might, you know, we might add a little bit of light here. We might add a little bit of a vignette around these areas to really highlight that area. And we're going to embrace this sunshine flooding in. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to open up a curves layer. Now, of course, my tutorials are much, much slower. This isn't really a tutorial. 
and I'm going to click on the middle of that curve and just drag that down a little like that. Command or Control I, invert the mask, B for brush, setting up my brush at about 30 opacity, 50% flow, hardness at zero, perfect. Making sure my brush is in white there, which it is. We're going to add a little, oops, of daisies. We don't want that there. Let me just go Command or Control minus a little bit. Give myself some room. Okay, as I said, I want a little bit of definition and shadow on the backs of these rocks. Even that highlight there doesn't really need to be there in the scope of what I'm thinking we need to be doing here. Okay. So that's looking good. We might add another curves layer, just bear with me. First time I've ever edited this. I haven't attempted to edit this, you know, as a warm up. Once again, Command or Control I. Back to our brush, B for brush. We can leave a little highlight on the front of those rocks like so. That one can go. I don't think we need that. It's kind of distracting like so. All right, we're getting there. That's looking really nice, a good base. Okay, let's grab my favorite, all-time favorite technique and really enhance this sunshine feel. We're going solid color. We are going an orangish color, somewhere in between yellow and red, and then just click in the middle. That will do as a starting point. Then change, I don't even know what this is going to do. Change from normal blend mode to color dodge. Well, it's kind of along the right path. Okay, you can see what's happening there. It's gone a little bit Armageddon on us, but that's okay. Double click. We're going to double click on the colored square here. Let's see if we can't find something. You know, maybe something like that. Click OK. This will mainly be for the lower half of the image. Click on the mask there, Command or Control I to hide that adjustment behind a black mask. And we'll use our white brush, just lower that opacity for this layer because this is a fairly intense layer. And we're just going to bring up some beautiful highlights here. You know, maybe around there, around there, around there. Looking perfect, looking interesting. Okay, I want to add a little bit of a hazy feel in there. Let's do that. So we're going to add a solid color layer again. Again in a yellowish orange, maybe slightly more towards yellow. Let's see. And then, a, you know, around about there on the click point. Now, if you're trying to follow along this technique at home for adding a sort of a sun glow haze, make sure that you have your color panel on the hue symbol, H4 hue. You can see saturation, brightness, hue, that one there. That will give you the rainbow slider that I have here. You can set up that rainbow slider somewhere near the yellow. Click up there like so. Click OK. Now watch what happens when we lower the opacity here. Okay, we get this interesting hazy look. We're down around 50%. We will click on the mask, Command or Control I to hide that. Nice big brush. And we'll create. sun glow like that. That's looking good. Okay, yes, yes, yes. That's looking great. Next, now often what people will try and do, and I used to do this when I was starting out too, you make a mistake and the first instinct is to try and hide it by darkening it down, recovering the highlights, all these types of things. Now once that doesn't work and we can rule out that, we go to Let's just embrace it. So what I'm thinking is we might even add some more light. Let's go curves. You know, just let it blow out. Just embrace the imperfections and we'll probably end up with something really, really nice. So let's just... Yep. Something like that. That's looking pretty nice. Maybe that was too much. I might just go back to a black brush. X on my keyboard. Just take that back a bit. I could also just lower the opacity. That's looking pretty nice. Let's do another solid color in color dodge and see if we can't get a little bit more sunlight going. Who knows? We're going to choose that orange roughly in the middle. Okay. Again, blend mode, color dodge. Again, we've struck Armageddon there. 
double click on the brown square and we'll Yeah, that's okay. Click on the mask, invert, and again, a really light opacity brush. This time only 10%. I just want a little bit. I don't want to blow out any of these areas down here. You know, that's, that's pretty good. A little bit maybe across here too. Let's bring that area in. That's looking nice. That might be a bit much there. Let's go back to a black brush. Let's dial that back a little. That's better. That's better. Okay, a couple of final little tweaks. We might add some, some cold hues into the shadows. Let's try that. Photo filter, where are you? There you are. All right, photo filter. Oh, I like instantly what the warm filter is doing to the middle. So let's, let's just leave that as is. I quite like that. Do you like before? After, a little bit more warmth, okay, sure. <laughs> um, always keep your eyes open. Photo filter. This time the second photo filter will go to a cooling filter. I like that one, the second one, for some reason. And all we're going to do, again, in my course you'll find the detailed instructions how to do blend if. We're going to double click on the blank space here. And using this little slider here, the this layer slider, we can grab the white slider which will slowly remove this cooling filter from the highlights. So we get this kind of dynamic colour combination of very warm highlights and coolish shadows. Alright, you can see that pulling out, out, out to about there. Hold down alter option, that will split so that we can get a nice feather. Okay, click OK. That's not bad to what I want. I think this, the, the warm tones up here are too much now and, and they really highlighted when I added that cool shadow in. They really look a little bit sort of yellowish lime greenish, which is not what I'm after. So I'm going to do a couple of things I think. And this is all about just keeping your eyes open and look, you will get more instinctive as you practice Photoshop more. A lot of these things, as soon as I do something, my eye sort of triggers and says, oh, that's a little bit too lime yellow. And I want that more warm tone to that yellow. Okay, it's also probably a bit too saturated. So I'm going to hit hue saturation first of all. And we'll just drop the saturation down a fraction like that. Perfect. Command or Control I to invert. And we'll just, as a big truck goes past, well, just with our white brush, and this one can go back up to 30%. Again, your opacity will become instinct as well. We're just going to paint away a little bit of that colour. It was a bit much up there. And the second thing we're going to do is add a colour balance layer. Okay, colour balance and highlights. Select highlights from the drop menu. And I want, I think, a little bit more magenta. Just have a little play with these filters in general. No, that goes a bit pink. Reds. Yeah, I think something like that. Okay, and the last step, we can have a play around with the crop. I think the, I think the composition is excellent, to tell you the truth, because, look, if we come down like this, yes, we remove the the blown out highlights at the top, but what do we lose? We're losing that scale and grandeur of the entire image, aren't we? Okay, so look, I think for me, we don't really need to do much. We've got this nice sort of shadow pathway leading us in. We've got this beautiful foreground of these two rocks. We've got this beautiful framing with this canyon and the grandeur of this height, and we wonder how much higher does it go? And then we have this beautiful glow of sunshine sort of pouring through there. I think we're done. Let's have a look at what we started with before. Okay, yeah, it's a beautiful image, beautiful composition, blown out highlights. Maybe I've gone a little over the top and this is a little key secret to processing is when you get to this stage, 
oh, it's not too bad. When you get to that stage and you think you're finished, go and have a cup of tea, you know, go and do whatever, do something else for a couple of minutes and then come back with fresh eyes and take another look before you go and post it on social media here, there and everywhere. Make sure that you're absolutely happy with it and the best way to do that, take a 10 minute break, refresh your eyes, come back to the screen because often what happens or what used to happen more so than now is I would tend to be in this kind of range like, oh, that looks amazing and I'd put it on Facebook and then I'd have a 10 minute break and look on Facebook and think, what happened to my image? That looks horrible, okay? Um, way too much, way, way, way too much. All right, so have that 10 minute break, come back. Look, I think combination of a bit of luck and my experience, I think we've actually landed in a place which is, you know, pretty close to the mark. Before, after, before, after. Anyway, thanks again for watching along. I hope you had a bit of fun. Make sure you subscribe if you enjoy photography, your passion is photography, and you just want to have a bit of fun and a bit of a laugh whilst we process, whilst we talk about photography, all things photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, this, that, the other, composition. Who knows what else we might do this year? Hit the subscribe button and support the channel. That would be absolutely fantastic. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.